Hey, this is Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters Miami, the host of The Game of Life, where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. Welcome to the Game of Life Mentoring Podcast. I'm your host, Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters Miami, and this is going to be fun. We may have to just rock you like a hurricane Let's today. Let's go. Let's In go. In studio with my guy, my friend, the founder and CEO of T-Rock, the newest uh, inductee for the Palmetto High School Hall of Fame with the Supreme Court Justice. We'll talk yeah. about that in they a minute. They made a mistake, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Not, not with her, with me. <laughs> <laughs> and an incredible, we we're talking about two decades of service here on our board of directors at Big Brothers Big Sisters, uh, husband, father, incredible just human being. Brett, welcome to the Game of Life, Thank buddy. You, man. Thank you for that intro. Oh, so how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm above ground. That's a good when, start. When people ask me, I just say, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really want to know. They just, I'm fine. Let me tell you, that, that's a good way to start above ground. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. So, Brett, you know, you, I've known you for, my goodness, almost two decades. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you preceded me here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, but consistent leader. And when I think of you, and I mean that sincerely, I think about you personally, I think about you professionally, but just for the benefit of our audience, uh, talk to us about just your leadership journey. Where did it start? Sure. And sure. Uh, I'm sure there's bumps along the way like everybody oh, else. Crazy, yeah, I, I, I actually started, I've been working kind of my whole life since early age, so I was kind of taught at an early age that work is your friend, for at least for me, and developing a strong work ethic will, will get you super far in life. Uh, so while I was going to school at University of Miami, I started uh, selling memberships at uh, what is now like a 24-hour fitness and got some success there uh, and became a manager at like 20 years old, managing a team of 10 or 15 salespeople selling memberships at, in that club environment. And I was super young and I had zero experience on how to be a manager or how to be a leader. Uh, so I had to just wing it. And what ended up happening is that when you perform and you listen and you show an example, age is invisible. Mm. Doesn't matter how, if you're 18 or 58 like I am today. Now, back then I was the youngest guy in the room, now I'm the oldest guy in the room. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you're 68, 78, 88, as long as you are kind of leading by example and treating people with respect and true to your core values, uh, that, that's the kind of leadership style that I have. I started uh, selling cell phones out of the back of a van in, uh, as a senior in college. Uh, we would drive around the parking lots of grocery stores and banks and malls, anywhere where there was traffic, and open our customized van door and set up a table wow. and sell phones and go buy the phones with their money and then deliver it back to their house or office that day. Back then, the bigger you sounded, the bigger you were. So back then, our name was Cellco Cellular, a division of Cellular Communications Network, Inc., and our slogan was, we're mobile because you are. Mm. Well, we were mobile because we didn't have an office. That was our office. So, I love that. Yeah, it, was, it was humble beginnings. We grew that company over time uh, to become the largest independent wireless retailer in the country before taking it public with Merrill Lynch and Smith Barney in 19, like 1997. Uh, but that really taught me how to hone listening skills and sales skills and management skills. Uh, I then went off to start a dot-com right before the bubble burst and used to fly to Silicon Valley every week and take the red eye back every, every Friday night. Uh, thankfully, we didn't spend all of our money on a Super Bowl commercial, so we survived <laughs> and ended up selling that business uh, five or six years later. So after that, I, I really um, recognized that there was a problem in the industry with anything that's complicated to sell, anything that's needs consultation. So T-Rock was formed. T-Rock stands for the revenue optimization companies, but T-Rock sounds a lot cooler. T-Rock so sounds cool. That's so, a cool name. So we go by that. Cool name. And basically what we do is we combine people solutions and technology solutions to optimize your business, to make sure you're maximizing your sales while at the same time decreasing your costs. So that's kind of been the journey. It's been one where I try to live by core values, be an entrepreneur every day, uh, Never take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Embrace change. Um, always do the right thing. Amaze your customers and be the best at what you do. And that's kind of how I like to feel. I do my best to live my life that way as well as any business that I'm operating in. Well, you certainly live your life that way. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I see it. You are consistent in that just the 
the joy you bring to what you do. Yeah. Uh, having fun, but taking care of to. business. It's like a top athlete, Brad. When you think about what you said, just the big, you know, just confidence and work ethic. It goes such a long way in terms of what you're hustling out of a, you know, the, your customized van and cell phones and all that. How big were the cell phones? I'm just curious. Oh, about as big as this table. <laughs> no, back then you actually had bag phones that were like literally like a backpack. Wow. The, the phone and the battery were in the backpack and you would carry it around and you'd pick up the phone like an old style phone. And then the famous brick, which yes. was the big Motorola phone, which was a, an amazing phone. So the evolution of that, I, I wish I kept an archive over the years, because I'm still quasi in that business yes. today, you know, of the evolution of what the cell phone and the smartphone, what they've done over the last 20 years. Now, speaking of hard work and evolution, transformation, uh, growth and development, mentorship, outside of your relatives, who along your leadership journey mentored you, Brett, and what did he or she just teach you that you use today? That's a great question. So many mentors, as you know, Gail. I, mean, I, I know you've had many and you've mm -hmm. mentored many in your career and you continue to do so. Uh, I would say one of the most influential mentors that I had was not a superhero, was not a business icon. Uh, it was my best friend's father. Mm. Uh, he was an extraordinary businessman down here in New York, uh, down here and also in New York. And he kind of taught me business principles after I would get out of a college class. So I was probably still working at Scandinavian, that health club mm -hmm. industry. And I'd go to his house. His son wouldn't even be there. And he would spend hours with me teaching me these concepts and principles and how to read a financial statement, by the way. I had no idea how to physically read a financial statement. Uh, patient, knowledgeable, um, really had my best interests at heart, which kind of transfers into what Big Brothers and Big Sisters does today. So probably my biggest mentor was, was that gentleman. How, at what age did you, you think about that mentorship journey with him? It was, I was 19, 20 years old maybe. It was a very young age, but I'd already gotten into the business world a little bit. Right. So I was already tasting and experiencing and feeling the challenges of decisions I'd never made before and questions I'd never been asked before. and. That's, it can be very intimidating if you don't have that knowledge at that young of an age. Sometimes you might consider, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? That's right. And so you've got to be courageous. Yeah, 1922, Brett. You think about, you know, it's this college course yeah. of just hard, I mean, the reality. I mean, you can have the book knowledge, but he was breaking stuff down for you that you could was relevant to where you were and where you wanted to go. It's very important to me that I completed my, my degree mm -hmm. at the University of Miami. It took me six years for a four-year degree, hey. have you? <laughs> hey. So it was a long journey to get the four-year degree, but I'm really happy I got it. However, the life experiences you get outside are magical, and they're the ones that truly impact your direction, how you act, uh, what you think about, and how you treat people come from that. Yeah, they really do. Yeah. Yeah. You are a business leader, uh, philanthropist, uh, incredible person, uh, I'm not leaving here, bro. Uh, hey, I tell you what, it's all good. Uh, what are some exciting things going on in your life? Because I know you got some exciting things uh, going on in your life. Well, I'm right going to stop with the Hall of Fame because that was a that was actually talk about that. Now they didn't make a mistake for the record. Now, so now who's in the 2023 so, class at Miami? Palmer? Yeah, there, there's there's first of all, this is the, the school has about a 60 year history. Awesome. And this is the third one of these that they've done. Uh, this in the second wow. class was Jeff Bezos the founder of Amazon. Yeah. And by the way, he's in my same class and he's next to me in the yearbook. It goes beverage and Bezos. So That's he got, <laughs> he got in number two. I, I, I was blessed enough to get into number three. Um, and it's, it's a mixture of all different types of, of business leaders, creators, educators, um, uh, you know, people who have invented aeronautical and have aeronautical patents to former athletes, to the Supreme Court Justice, which was amazing. She was spectacular, mm -hmm. very approachable, knowledgeable, gave a really great short talk uh, about her life and, and how she came up. So it was a big deal, man. They had the college band out there. They had you know, local politicians out there. It was a lot of fun, very it's special a big deal. Day. That's a yeah, big a deal. Congratulations day. Thank on you. that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and you're doing some stuff in the uh uh, on the silver screen, the lower, the lower, yeah, the yeah. So, so T Rock is on pa on per current path to get really growth reignited again. So I'm happy about that. 
Uh, I am making movies now. Me and my daughter started a production company called Point Productions, and we've made uh, three movies now, one of which I was in this studio with you, uh, thankfully presenting a little little gift uh, to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, That's a lot of fun. Uh, Learning a lot, it's like a new new endeavor for me, so that's fun. Um, I'm actually writing a book as well I've been working on for a while. That book is called Do It Anyway. Do It Anyway. Talk to us about that. So uh, there have been many times I can't tell you how many times that I've kind of looked back and said, would I be here right now if I would have known what was going to happen before? You've heard that many times before. And um, thankfully, I can say I absolutely would. And even though I might have been nervous and uncertain and everyone telling me that what I'm thinking about is crazy and why don't you just get a stable environment for me being an entrepreneur and starting with a blank napkin, is what I love to do. So when you feel those feelings, but you're passionate about something and you feel like you have the resources and you're, and you're confident about it and you love it and you're scared, do it anyway. You're not gonna look back when you're older in life and say, I shoulda, coulda, woulda, if you go for it. So I say, do it. So that's what it's about. I love that because it's a life with no regrets. Right. I love well, then it can apply to, do I wanna jump out of an airplane with a parachute? You know, it can apply to pretty much any challenge that gets you out of your comfort zone. It, it applies. No, oh, congrats. When's the book coming out? Should be out later this year. That's good. Yeah, later this year, maybe fourth quarter. That's good. Give us yeah. the name of that book again. Do It Anyway. Do It Anyway. I mean, that's we're going to lock that in. I love that. And speaking of doing it anyway, what you've been doing for 20 years, <laughs> two decades, Brett, yeah. you've served on the board of directors yeah. here at Big Brother Big Sisters, past board chair. What keeps you engaged? It's the cause, man. It is the cause. Uh, having a underprivileged or someone who's not been dealt a great hand be able to, to get a personal hero, you know, someone mm-hmm. who has their best interests at heart, someone without a hidden agenda, someone that that, that young influenceable person can, can trust and, and feel like they're being guided. They can be exposed to things that they've never been exposed to. For the, for, the, for the mentee, what, what a life-changing circumstance it is for them as well. That if they embrace it and they're curious about it and they, they, they maximize the experience, it's just, it's just life-changing for both parties. I, what used to get me every board meeting, and you would introduce many of these presentations, is when a new match is made. And we would start our board meetings, every board meeting, with a new match, and the, the first time you would see this match, you would see a young, a little, you know, kind of, you know, hiding behind the big, just kind of like very intimidated, very shy, and just trying to get through, very uncomfortable. And the next meeting, six months later, or maybe a year, with the same match, you know, that little wow. is standing strong, it's right. proud on his or her own, talking about their accomplishments, how much better they're doing in school, their aspirations for college, that they want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an entrepreneur or whatever, an astronaut, whatever the case may be. That was so powerful that that has stuck with me definitely over the last 20 years, and it's kind of molded the type of philanthropic work that I like to do. It's, it's underprivileged youth, youth. Orange Bowl is like that. Congratulations to Gail <laughs> Nelson as of yesterday nominated and elected to the Orange Bowl Committee for Life. So I'm so happy I was a tiny little part of that process and there could not be a better new member than Gail Nelson in, in that group. So, but they, they also serve a lot of underprivileged yes. youth. So does the United Way, you know, yes. so does, even University of Miami is an underprivileged, but they do have a constituency there. And last year we donated a, a laptop to about 50 people that didn't have access to that that were high school seniors that were trying to get into University of Miami. So it's, it's been very important to me. And there's a, you know, you can connect those dots very, your entrepreneurial spirit, seeing an investment of time and sweat, and you know, the, the sweat equity you put in there, and to see something, that blank napkin, and to see something develop. Yeah. And these kids don't need to be fixed, but there's something on every one of their quote unquote napkins. Yeah. There's so much potential, unlimited potential. Yeah. yeah. And so. And unleashing that is, is man. it's, selfishly and for you you know that's what we that's what we love that's what we love and is it never gets old it's priceless and i love what you said and for those listening we're here with brett beverage founder and ceo of t-rock 
uh, big brothers, big sisters board member over 20 years, former board chair, uh, author. <laughs> yes. Author. <laughs> yes. But one of the things that's so important for our listeners, and I want folks to understand this, Brett, it helps both parties. Because that mentorship journey. 100%. Uh, you mean your best friend's dad who helped you, you know, he was feeling good, seeing probably that look in your eye and seeing what you were doing with it. Because you were just like, you were that sponge taking all that in. You're using it today. 100%. And definitely. so these littles, it's the same thing. It's not, we're not sitting here to save a kid, to fix a kid. These kids have, they just need support. And it never stops, right? I mean, how many relationships do you see that last? They're lifetime relationships. Lifetime. These are not, they, they come home for Thanksgiving. You know, they're, they're, they're part of the family for life. They become the, the bigs, the littles that, bec that become bigs That's when right. they're older in their lives and they're more developed in their careers of what they're going to do with their lives. So it's just, it's, uh, we both share a deep passion for it. And you've been serving this community and this role for, in, in previous roles in your life. You've always, whether you're coaching juveniles uh, <laughs> situations right. or you're, 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 you're preaching, you're, 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 a, you're a spiritual leader, whatever it is, it's always been influenced by uh, helping these underprivileged youth uh, maximize their, their possibilities. It's great. I tell you what, brother, it's uh, about connecting those dots. And oh, yeah. it's, uh, those dots of service and helping those, because they'll come back, they'll pay us back. And that's what we need to do. So that's a good stuff, Brett. Now, these kids have challenges. Uh, we've talked about your leadership journey, those who've mentored you, uh, your business enterprises, and all the fun stuff you're doing, just doing it anyway. Uh, I love that name. I love that name, Brett. Uh, we'll get some merch out there. There you go. No doubt. No doubt. No, no doubt. Sign me up. Uh, but in By terms the way, of it's trademarked. <laughs> Boom. Boom. There you go. Let's, let's note that. Uh, but in terms of uh, just challenges you faced along yeah. the way and how you've dealt with it. Just name it, talk to me about and talk to us about a challenge you face because it's important. People see and like, well, yeah, these folks don't have any problems and you business founder and CEO. Yeah. Yeah. It's important that our littles, our bigs, and not just our littles and bigs, but just other business people yeah. recognize and share some of these pain points, tension points. Talk about a challenge you face and how you got through it. This is a tough one because I have a business uh, challenge and I have a, a personal challenge. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think which one might be better for the Sony. I'm, I'm going to go with the personal one. Okay. That's all right. That's fine. So, you know, I have three daughters. Yes. Um, my youngest daughter was attending University of Texas, so UT Austin. Maybe two years ago, we get the call at 1.30 in the morning, the call that no parent wants to get, saying that, oh, well, you know, one of her friends, we're in, the, we're in the ambulance taking Sophia to the hospital. She's fine. She'll be okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Call us right away comes to turn out that the 10 of them were in downtown Austin going to a, a party mm -hmm. about 11 o'clock, innocent. Sophia, of course, was leading the pack with GPS to get them to that location. And she's walking and, and she, she literally walk, looks up, passes by, and all of a sudden that person kind of hit her in the back of the head, unprovoked. Sophia goes down, blood starts to form around her, and turns out she'd gotten stabbed. Mm. Uh, in the back of the neck and was kind of paralyzed, couldn't really move. And that, that, that homeless person ended up um, stabbing three other people before she got caught. But my daughter was, was hurt the most. Uh, so, of course, when things develop, we get there the next day and we didn't leave the hospital for six weeks uh, of that. But she, thankfully, it, you know, she is now pretty much 100%. It's been a long journey for her. Uh, and the reason I tell this story is because when you're a father and you have daughters or sons uh, and you're not there to protect them at all times, it, it, it's frustrating and it, your emotions come out, your human emotions come out. That's right. So what inspired me and what, what, what kind of forced me to evolve is that she was such an inspiration. She wasn't complaining. She had, she had no no hate for this person. She it was a circumstance that she, de she dealt with, and she went through all the rehabilitation, all the pain, the surgeries, the challenges that she still faces, you know, somewhat today. It's kind of a lifelong, you know, go to this doctor for that, that doctor for that, make sure everything's healing okay still, uh, make sure you have no scar tissue, all those things happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, the lesson I would say there is no matter what cards you're dealt, mm -hmm. um, no matter how <clears throat> bad you think it is, uh, there is a way out. If you have faith and you have inspiration and you have an open mind, whether you're 
uh, uh, someone who's been dealt a bad card, uh, deck of cards as a youth, or what other circumstances may come your way, just charge into it. You know, there's this, there's this saying, um, there are cows and buffalo. The cows, when a ho- horrendous storm comes, they sit in the same spot and they just get barraged by the storm until the sor- storm decides to pass. Buffalo charge into the storm and they get to the other side real fast. And what do we want to be, cows or buffalo? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's one little bit of advice I would, I would suggest the littles out there take a listen to. Well, Brett, first of all, I'm just glad Sophia is fine. Yeah, thank uh, you. And Lucky. Yes, uh, just uh, so thankful that, that she's doing well. Uh, and your advice to our littles and bigs about just being those, I mean, anyone in life, I mean, the storms of life will come. Oh, yeah. But to be that they buffalo, will. charge, charge. Brett, I just can't thank you enough for, and to call you a fellow <laughs> Orange Bowl committee, yeah, to serve right. with you and these incredible people doing incredible things as a community. I look forward to that. But I just, I'm just thankful for our friendship. Me too. Because I mean great. that sincerely. Yeah, I've seen you uh, in many roles uh, th- with Big Brothers and do many things. And it's been really exciting for me and inspirational to see us kind of grow together right. as leaders and as parents and all of that. So congratulations to you too. No, so thank you for all that you have done, your family uh, continues to do in the community, around this country, on the silver screen. <laughs> and certainly uh, you're a big part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters family. Proud this Game of Life Mentoring Podcast with Brett Beveridge, founder and CEO of T-Rock, author. And when it comes to being a big, if you want to be a big, you know, if you're thinking about it, I don't know, uh, do it anyway. anyway. <laughs> On this Game of Life Mentoring, www.bbsmiami.org, do it anyway. Brett, thank you, brother, for thank all you, you do. Thank you. In the Game of Life, everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you. Let's go. Hey, this is Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters Miami, the host of The Game of Life, where everybody makes the team, but how you play is up to you.